Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Mingled Yarn Cast, episode nine. Uh, this episode, I think I'm going to title it Disappointment. Womp, womp, womp. Because, um, yeah, I, the reason you haven't heard so much from me in the past two months is because I've just kind of been like, eh, as far as my knitting is concerned. Not life. Life is good. Everything's okay. It's just been one of those periods of time where the things that I'm working on aren't really giving me the kind of, I don't know, pleasure that I'm looking for when I'm making something. And um, yeah, I thought it would be fun to uh, share that with you rather than always trying to be upbeat and optimistic. <laughs> Let's talk about the fact that sometimes things don't go the way we want. What do we do then? Um, but before we get to the knitting, let me just tell you a little bit about what's happened since then. So since the last episode, I mean. Uh, the last episode was the episode about France and travels and the inspiration that I got from that. And I'm still kind of feeding off of that experience. And um, all that is good. Um, I was back for just a couple of days before my grandmother came to visit. And you may recall, if you watched the previous episode, that I did suggest I might interview her. However, that didn't happen. Um, the reason it didn't happen is we just, we were so busy. We, she arrived and then we went to immediately to Boston and visited Boston for a couple of days. We also visited Salem while we were up there. Oh, I just forgot. Hold on, I have something to share with you. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, so uh, in Salem, Massachusetts, uh, I of course went there because of the, the reasons everybody goes there, the witch history. Um, which is sad and tragic. Uh, as an English teacher, though, I teach The Crucible and other, you know, works sort of connected to that. Um, and yet, as an English teacher, I totally forgot about Nathaniel Hawthorne. In fact, we were standing in front of the Customs House in Salem, and I had this memory. I was just like, Customs House, Salem. Isn't this where Hawthorne wrote The Scarlet Letter? And so I quickly looked it up, and I was like, yeah, it is. Like, that knowledge was there in my head and I totally forgot about it. And then in looking that up, I was like, oh yeah, the House of the Seven Gables. I haven't read it, but I should. And it's here in town, so let's go see it. So um, I went there to the House of the Seven Gables, got the bag, got the book, by the way, which they have a little stamp if you get it there with his signature. So it's, you know, it's like he signed it. Same thing. Um, it's been dead a long time, but whatever. And anyway, in town, there's a, a local yarn shop called Circle of Stitches. Ha ha ha. And um, anyway, I went in. I wanted to get something. I didn't know what. I figured since everybody around town was dressed in their witching, bewitching finest, um, I should get something a little goth. So I got this lovely Nightshades American Cormo. And as you can see up close, it's not... Uh, a pure black. It's got a lot of like dark purple in it. And um, the woman working at the store, she suggested um, an Andrea Maori pattern a hat to do basically, I believe it's a brioche pattern that matches this with a lighter yarn of, you know, color of your choice. Um, however, I thought to myself, you know, I could do that. Maybe I'll use that as my starting point. But um, given that I went to the House of the Seven Gables. Uh, maybe I'll make a Seven Gables hat. Something with like, you know, seven points all coming to a peak. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But anyway, um, yeah, that was very cool. I mean, I'm excited to get started on that at some point. A lot of things in the queue at the moment. So we shall see how that goes. But um, anyway, Salem was a lot of fun. Really, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed Boston. I had never been there actually, um, which is crazy considering that I've lived in New York for 20 years, but I'd never gone up to Boston. So that's off the list now. Um, and I would definitely go back. It was beautiful. I really, really enjoyed the time there. We had a lot of fun. So we came back to New York. We spent a day here in New York, um, just doing touristy things in the city. Then the next day we went to Philadelphia and we did touristy things there. We just stayed for the day and we came back. Then we went and visited my sister in Connecticut and we stayed there for a couple of nights. So um, all that said, there was lots of movement. Um, we just didn't really make the time to sit down and do a video like this because there were just other things to do. And um, when she left, I had a few days 
where I wasn't traveling, but then I went back to work because my school does a sort of orientation for the incoming students. And um, it's just three days, kind of like summer camp for three days. So I did that. Then I went to visit my mother and, well, my mom and my family, um, siblings, all of it, um, in Kentucky and Cincinnati. And then I visited my dad up by Lake Erie. And then I came back here. And then I had a wedding to go to that was a several day long affair in Long Island. And then it was time for school to start. So that was all of my August. And even though school started at the beginning of September and now it's practically the end of September, it just goes quickly. I'm sure you all know that. So um, anyway, that is why I haven't made a video. I'm very, very sorry about that. Um, I always intend to do these much more regularly, as you know, because it seems like every video begins with me apologizing for not uh, you know, making one sooner. I guess this is no different. However, I'm going to keep trying. All right. So, um, what comes next after that? Let me look at my notes here. <laughs> this is the wrong, oh no, that's the right page. Um, ah, I did forget something. Um, at Lake Erie, when I was visiting my dad, I always stop in. There's a really, really wonderful um, shop there. And I've mentioned her before. Um, it's called Christie's Just For You. I'm trying to like get the glare to go away so you can see the bag properly. I'm sure you can see it anyway. Um, Just For You. And uh, she's got this wonderful little compound um, of buildings, a really beautiful gift shop, um, a really excellent yarn store um, and a workshop space where she teaches all kinds of, of crafts uh, from knitting and crochet to weaving and um, and I'm sure there's much more I couldn't even tell you she has a, a long brochure of all the things that she can teach you to do and uh, she's very nice always fun to chat with her and while I was there so I picked up what did I pick up a couple of sock yarns I always feel like it's an easy thing. I can just walk away with one and have something to make, and I don't have to buy a huge quantity of anything. Um, but I got, uh, so I've seen these before, and maybe you've used them, and if you have, tell me what you think um, about the experience. So these are Zauber balls. They are balls of Zauber. Zauber is German for magic, and um, so they're magic balls of yarn. And as you can see, or as you can imagine, I'm sure, when I knit these up into socks, which is what they will be, they will have some beautiful natural striping that just happens without any effort on my part. I suppose that is the Zauber of it all. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to working with these. They're really soft, really, really nice. And then I also got um, this one, Wild Foot Luxury Sock Yarn. It is a... Um, Washable wool and nylon, hand painted. Kind of looks like I'm wearing mini mouse ears or something like that. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Brown Sheep Company. So again, I picked those up at Christie's just for you. If you are ever in the Marblehead area or Port Clinton, which is um, for those of you that aren't so familiar with the Midwest or with Ohio, it's over on the western side of the state not all the way west uh, if you've gone to toledo you've gone too far but um yeah it's it's in the toledo area it's about an hour 45 minutes from there so um yeah that was a fun acquisition i really enjoyed that time um now let's see what's coming up what's coming up uh there's a lot coming up <laughs> so as i've said this episode will be about some disappointments, but I, I, I'm not the type to like wallow. I don't, I don't like that energy and I don't, you know, like being around it and other people. So I don't try to give that out there myself. Um, but I, um, thought, you know, okay, we've got to actively regenerate the mojo here and, and get excited about some things. So the projects that were, um, being bad, the ones that I had to put away for a little while, I decided to put those away and pick up my uh, a West Knits whip that I'd been working on for a while. And I thought to myself, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do the mystery knit along this year. I 
I've never done it before. I've done um, the Hyper Knit Along, uh, the West Knits Hyper Knit Along, but I've never done the West Knits MCAL. I've never done any MCAL, so I'm looking forward to that experience and seeing how it goes. Um, and I thought to myself again, in the spirit of just doing something fun, purely fun, um, I would get myself a kit and yeah, just like embrace the whole um, spirit of the thing <laughs> and really, really uh, jump in uh, with both feet. So um, I got a kit. Let me show it to you here. I've actually, I've got the computer sitting on it, so I've got to lift this up. While I'm lifting the computer up, check out the weather out there. Do you see how gross that is? There's a hurricane that's been going by. I mean, I guess it's the remnant of a hurricane. It's not really a hurricane here anymore, but I mean, not for New York. But anyway, um, you may also see that because it's so gray out, I decided I wanted to just like cover the couch with all of my West Knits shawls because they just add color everywhere they go. Color and happiness. Um, okay, so, ah, the box. I show you the box. And uh, I love to, when you open the box, the first thing you see is that Share your unboxing with us online. Well, okay, West Knits and Stephen and Penelope, here I go. Um, so, first thing you see when you open up your box, your kit, is a bag. Now, he had profiled on his profile, he had shown on his profile um, all of the different colors of bags and styles of bags that they were doing. I was very happy to get this one. This is a color I really enjoy. Kind of a brick reddish burnt sienna-ish, red brownie kind of color um, with that fun chartreuse label. And the um, theme, if you don't already know this, the theme for the mystery knit along this year is um, Geo Gradient, I believe. And um, so all of the colorways or all of the kits that they've suggested have been shades of, of one color or, or very, very similar um, colors. So the one that I got, here is the spread. Now, we all know that I love green, so I had a hard time passing this one up. Um, but uh, it's uh, West Wool Bicycle. There you go. Um, the colors are Pickle Juice, Avocado, um, Green Olive, and finally, that the color? Wellington. <laughs> Wellington. So, um, yeah, there are actually eight skeins, so I guess uh, it's going to take eight of these. And I don't know what to expect in terms of the um, pattern or anything else, but I'm looking forward to it. And, um, oh, the bag also contains some goodies. So let me show those to you. And let me also put this back up here. Puts the camera up a little bit. Okay, um, in the bag, we also have ta -da! a very fun see-through chartreuse um, gauge needle marker. We have several stickers. Ta -da! And tags, labels that you can put on uh, to let everybody know that this was the MCAL piece for this year. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I always uh, have enjoyed, not always, but I've enjoyed for the last several years um, watching everybody complete their pieces. Um, and share things online, and I don't know why I haven't done it in the past. I think that, well, actually in the past there were just other projects I was working on at the time and that I was focused on, and, and you know, at the moment it just wasn't the thing that I wanted to do, um, but now it is. So <laughs> I, I, will be, I will be one of those people posting my regular progress and uh, looking forward to getting your feedback and also seeing what others are doing and, yeah, having fun commenting and, and enjoying it all together. So 
that is something that is bringing me joy, and um, I hope it will bring you some joy too if you're taking part. Um, let's see. You know, I said this was going to be about disappointment, but so far I've only talked about good things, and I forgot something um, in the little update. But uh, it is yarn related, well, craft related. So my birthday was last week, it was September 20th, and um, I had friends, family friends who were visiting from out of town who had never been to New York before. And um, I said, well, you know, come here and I'll, I'll show you around and we'll, we'll have a good time. And we did. It was really nice. And um, so Debbie, she, uh, during the lockdown period, took up quilting. And she's only been doing it for the last couple of years, but she's kept on doing it and has really enjoyed it. She's found a group of friends who also started at the same time. And um, they've even taken quilting vacations together, renting like a, an Airbnb and a lake somewhere and just, you know, spending time together laughing and crafting and, and doing that. So I think that's really, really cool. Anyway, um, I told her it was my birthday and she was like, oh, you don't have to show us around on your birthday. And, and I said, no, no, it's, it's, it's no big deal. Um, it'll be fun. It's a great way to spend my birthday. Anyway, um, I thought, you know, they might buy me a drink, maybe even buy my dinner. That would be nice. I certainly don't expect anything, but, you know, if you wanted to do something, that would be something. Um, however, what I did not expect was uh, she made me a quilt, and it's gorgeous. And she even called my mother to find out, like, what my favorite colors were. I don't know if I can even get it. I'm going to try to get as much as I can in here. God, it's huge. Um, let's see. What's the best way to do this? <laughs> Do I have it going the right way? I do. So it's a beach theme. I'm sorry, I'm going to be talking behind this. Uh, I'll try not to. Yeah, here we go. So beautiful beach fabric. And then this sort of window effect with all of these different blues and clouds and framed. And um, these this border, I love this border. Look at it. It's, uh, I guess it's, old wood painted, uh, but to me when I look at it, it keep, I, I, I see bookshelves. I know they're not really books, there's no titles or anything like that, but that's, that's what it's giving. It's giving bookshelves, to use my modern slang. Um, but anyway, yeah, so she gave me this beautiful quilt, and um, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I, I really, really am very grateful, as I said, didn't expect it, T totally took me by surprise, and it was a wonderful surprise. So thank you, Debbie. And um, anyway, yeah, I love it. And, and if you'll recall in the last video, I mentioned going to the American Folk Art Museum and really being taken by the quilts there. It just kind of reminds me that there's so much more for me to learn in terms of crafts. Um, I, I had much more interest now in learning how to make something like this. I have um, much more interest now in learning how to crochet and learning how to do needlepoint, actually. Uh, if you haven't already listened to um, Irina's Fiber Chat video with Kay Facet, he talks about uh, needlepoint. And um, that was something that, um, oh, what's the name of the shop in uh, the West Village? West Village Knit and Needle, I believe. Um, they were telling me about needlepoint and all of the things that they have there. And I don't know. I, I don't know what my hesitation has been with it. it just didn't interest me that much but then hearing them talk about it hearing Kay Facet talk about it and um and then seeing more and more things online I have I have more of an interest in that now too so yeah there's so much to learn <laughs> there's no reason to ever be bored is there um okay now now are we on to something that's disappointed me uh, maybe let's see Pull this aside. <laughs> okay. So what have I been working on? I have been working on, um, as you know from the last video, uh, I brought some yarns back from Paris and uh, they were the colors of burgundy. I was not the color burgundy, not that deep purple wine color, the colors of burgundy, the region, Bourgogne. And um, they, uh, I, I really was enjoying working on it. I think I maybe did not bring it over here with me. Un moment. Okay, I'm back. Um, 
Yeah. So, my original intention with this piece was to um, make a lacy top, like so. See, you can see through it. But it's also kind of solid enough that I could wear it out and about and not feel like I was being too risque. Um, because, you know, here's the thing. Last summer, um, I made this. I made this. Um, this skimpy little piece. <laughs> it's a design by uh, James N. Watts. And I really do like it. Honestly, I really, really do. Um, it's the Pure Mesh Pullover. And um, I would put it on for you, but my students may see this video. And the last thing Mr. Weber needs is still photos of him wearing this um, appearing around the school. So, uh, <laughs> I made it for fun. Um, I thought maybe, you know, I'd get some place to wear this. But in all honesty, it looks wonderful on other people. I'm a little too modest. It's not really for me. But, but, that is not to say um, that it isn't, it's a wonderful pattern. It was fun to make, a lot of fun to make, and very, very quick. And also, oh, I should point out the yarn um, is by um, Josh from Blue Fiber Company. And um, this is a color, oops, sorry, uh, the computer went dead for a second. It's a color he uh, calls Corton, and um, it was dyed especially for me. So I was really appreciative. It was exactly the color that I wanted. It was perfect. And, um, I mean, it does look good on me. Maybe I'll show you a little later in some form or another. Um, but anyhow, yeah, so I, uh, I made it and thought, well, I'm probably not going to wear this a whole lot, but I'm glad that I made it. And I would like to do some other things like this. Uh, one thing that I did last year for the Dinée en Blanc, I may have shown you this before, um, same basic pattern, the same sort of lacy, um, you know, laciness. Uh, I, this, this pattern, by the way, it has a name in the Vogue Stitch Dictionary. Hold on. Right there. I'll tell you in a second. Um, so anyway, I wanted to do something with it again. And uh, so I made this, and, and this was also very, very quick. Um, okay, I'm almost there. I know where it is because I've looked it up. Um, is it a trellis? Yeah, I think it's the um, twisted trellis. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. That's basically what this is. And um, so anyway, Dine en Blanc, I wanted to make something fun. It's a dinner and it's a white dinner. And um, everything has to be white, so I made this, and it got lots of attention, and I had fun with it, and it's, you know, it's very dramatic. And uh, anyway, loved it. Uh, so I thought to myself, I want to take another stab at this, but I want to make something, you know, so it's not quite so see-through, not quite so chain-link, and a little more, you know, well, a little less. <laughs> and, um, and this is, but here is the problem. And it's totally of my own doing. It's not the fault of the yarn. It's not the fault of the pattern. It's not, none of that. Um, it's this. So I used three colors and I also used cotton. This is a little too warm. Um, and it was my first time really using cotton. And it was, it was everything that, it, that people online told me flax would be. And if you recall the shirt, the top that I made with flax, um, the Lesko Henley, uh, I really enjoyed working with that. That didn't stress my hands or my fingers out at all. Maybe it was that particular yarn. I don't know. But this cotton did hurt me. I mean, it, it, it's, it, you know how I, after you knit for a while, your hands get stressed out and you can, you can feel it, you know, you got to take a break and do something. Well, I would get to that point much, much sooner, like after 15, 20 minutes. So I kept having to stop a lot. I, because I switched the colors, I decided that I wasn't going to break the yarn every time, that I was just going to carry them up. So as you can see, I'm dealing with three colors here, and it's done flat. So, um, although I've sewn the, um, the shoulders together. So anyway, 
Uh, there's lots of, you know, back and forth and back and forth with two colors. And I did it, um, each stripe is three rows. So at any given moment, there's a one color hanging off of one end and one off of the other. And I'm carrying them both up as I go. I suppose I could have broken the yarn each time, but given that it's a kind of lacy thing, I thought, you know, there's nowhere to hide it when I, I can't really weave it in without having it be seen somewhere. And it's it's just, it's such a, um, yeah, I mean, just where is it going to hide? Maybe here in the seams, uh, because I did leave a little selvage there, but I thought, you know, that's going to make that bulky, chunky, very uneven, um, and not fun to sew up. So... I stand by my choice to <laughs> not break them, but that just me meant that every, oh, every three stripes or so, I had to spend five or ten minutes just untangling everything. And I know theoretically and mathematically, perhaps, if I was very consistent and very conscious about turning the piece the same way every time, that it might work out differently so that things didn't tangle quite so much. But... This is a lot of stripes. This is a lot of turning. There are plenty of times when I didn't turn it the right way. And that just meant that there were lots of tangles. So whereas this took all of, mm, not more than a week, I think it was maybe four or five days, um, and the scarf about the same, this has taken forever. <laughs> it's taken so long. And... In the process, um, I don't know. I'm, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I don't know. The, the cotton, I don't know if it's going to stretch and fit the same way as this. I mean, because it's, as rinky-dink as this is, I mean, it's a tiny little thing. But it's merino wool, and it stretches very nicely. That's the point. Um, the cotton, despite the fact that I swatched with it, just feels like, I don't know, it's not going to... It's not going to cooperate. And that makes me go, I don't know if I want to keep going with it. I mean, I will. I am going to keep going with it just to finish it and just to see. But I needed to put it down for a while. It needed to go sit in the corner and think about what it has done. And it needed to really like, I wanted an apology. I'm, st I'm still waiting. Okay. I'm waiting for the apology from you. Um, and <laughs> I don't know when that's going to come. But um Anyway, that's the state of it. Uh, it, it. It is pretty, isn't it? Now that I've brought it out to show you, and now that I've told you, you know, just how badly it was misbehaving, now I kind of feel like I'm ready to maybe to go back to it. Maybe this is what I need. I need to have this moment with all of you and uh, really come to peace <laughs> with this shirt. Um, but uh, anyhow, here, let me, let me, I, I will put this one on and we'll see where it stands because I do have it kind of clipped together. So here we go. Ta-da. Okay. So <laughs> it feels a little funny. Um, but anyway, we'll see. We'll see how this works out later. I'm planning, by the way, to put um, a yellow collar here so that it's more of a polo, something flopping over. Yellow on the sleeves uh, to start and then striped and then keeping it short sleeve. So that is the plan. Ta-da. Yeah, you know what? It's going to be all right. Who knows? Maybe it'll be my Rhinebeck sweater. I haven't even talked about Rhinebeck yet. But I'm not going to do the rest of the show in this because I feel a little underdressed. So here we go. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, what else to show you? Well, let's talk about that piece for just a little bit longer. Um, because my question really is, what do you do? What's, what's, what's your response when something's not giving you joy? Are you the type that pushes through with it and tries to keep it going and just finishing because completion is important? Or do you let it sit for a while? I know, you know, a lot of people talk about being a monogamous knitter or a promiscuous knitter, I suppose. Um, and I, I definitely have a couple of whips going on at the moment, but I don't have too many. I try not to have that many. There's always something small like a sock and there's usually something bigger like a shawl or a sweater, um, and maybe one other, but I don't have a ton. 
Um, I do like to complete things, and it does bother me a bit, <laughs> if I'm being honest, to leave them sit too long. Um, but, yeah, I wonder, I wonder how you deal with that. And um, let me just adjust myself. Um, yeah, in general, um, what happens when something just isn't working the way you want? Obviously, it's yarn. We can take it apart, right? We can start over again. Um, and that's actually kind of a bit of a problem with these. So these are my burgundy socks. I can't remember what state they were in when I did the last episode. Did I have one done already or was I still working on this one? I can't recall. Um, but anyway, so this one, this is the first one. And I really like this. I'm really happy with it. It was just me playing around with it and creating, um, you know, texture using yarn overs and pattern in that way. So that I'm very pleased with, but it doesn't really fit me that well. And in this piece, I don't mind that so much because a sock that doesn't fit will fit somebody. So it can be a gift. <laughs> once I've thoroughly photographed it and once I've written up the pattern, then uh, it can go to somebody else. But um, anyway, I, I even with that, I suppose, because I did hope to keep these for myself um, and I I know that I could take it apart. I just don't feel like it. I just feel like there are other things that I want to start working on, so I don't want to start over with this. Therefore, it needs to find another home. Um, but uh, yeah, and then definitely there are, I mean, of course there are things that when sweaters and such, when I know that it's made for me and it really doesn't fit, I will certainly take it apart. But in this case, it wasn't that the thing didn't fit, it was more that mm, mm, I just got tired of it. But like I say, maybe now it's time to go back. Um, okay, continuing on. What else do I have to share with you? Notes, notes, notes. Oh, yeah. Um, another thing I worked on recently. So I have a friend. Um, who was one of uh, my teachers from Bath, and he's a medieval scholar. His name's Rob Jones. He has written two books, which I want to share with you, Shameless Promotion of Friends. Um, one book on knights and the warrior in the world of chivalry. In fact, the class that I first took with him was a class that was on chivalry. And uh, this one, The Cultural History of the Medieval Sword. They're really, really good, well done, well written, really great photographs and pictures. Um, anyway, uh, he was here a few months ago and he gave me a beautiful skein of yarn because he uh, lives, I, I'm not going to reveal his address, but it's somewhere in the UK and he uh, has a farm and he has um, sheep. And so he and his wife, they, uh, they don't dye their own wool uh, I don't think they sell it themselves, but they do sell it to wholesalers and others who prepare it and, and turn it into yarn. Um, but they do have some skeins of their own, and so they gave me one. And I, I want to make sure I'm getting this right, so I've got to look at his message to me. It's from a sheep named Rose, and Rose is a Hill Radnor Wensleydale cross. So it's a beautiful natural fiber. Um, here's here's the, the basic color of it just pure white and um, anyhow I, I wanted to do something that was you know honoring the person that gave it to me and since uh, Rob is very much a man of the sword <laughs> uh, I wanted to do something that was blade like a motif or a pattern that suggested sword now I think it was successful in that. I'm going to just show you this this way first, if I can, if you can see that. So I found a pattern in the Stitch Dictionary with some cables, and I brought it to a point. Now, again, here's what I envisioned. This was going to expand this way and then decrease this way into a square, right? And... Um, I didn't really know how much yarn I was going to have with, so I was playing yarn chicken from the very beginning. I thought maybe it might be long enough to tie around the neck, just a little neckerchief. 
wasn't quite that long. So the piece is much smaller than I thought, and the shape is much different than I thought because I think, I think the reason is, I, I, I definitely did the math right in terms of like increasing and decreasing in equal proportion, but I did a, um, an I-cord uh, edge on both sides and that pulled it tighter. And so the corners, well, there are no corners in the middle of it. So it's very, um, very almond shaped. And this is what it finally looks like. And I can't, it, it folds in on itself. So it's very hard to keep open. I'm going to like have to bite down on my teeth here. So that's the shape of it. Now, I'm just going to let your imagination play with that a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to say what I think it looks like because it's a G-rated show, but <laughs> it's not what I was going for, and that's okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, um, yeah, I, so I worked on this for quite a bit, and then when it all came out and it was kind of like, womp, womp, not what you thought you were making. And I couldn't tell as it was going on, as it was on, because it felt like it was going to have that square shape that I was looking for. But uh, sadly, it did not. It had other plans. And so, um, all that is to say, it's one more thing where I was very excited and very hopeful. And, and, and I should also add that Rob was here in the States this past weekend. And so I wanted to really finish it and show it to him, perhaps give it to him, make something that would be very special. I suppose it is special. That, that hasn't changed, <laughs> but I'm going to take it apart, frog it, and make something else. That's the plan for that. <laughs> um, okay, where are we now? Let's see here. Um, bum, bum, bum. That might be it for knitting projects at the moment because, whoa, well, actually, no. I have mentioned this before. Um, this is bringing me joy. This is a, a piece that I started last year and it's a modified Stephen West piece. It's modified from the um, painting, painting chevron shawl, but I've, I'm doing it as a, uh, scarf and it's almost done it's all tangled up at the moment but yeah so you can see yeah yeah it's 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 really very very close to being finished i just have maybe one more section of colors to do let's see here and i'm loving that i really love the stained glass sort of effect that it has. Um, so that'll be done soon. And hopefully, I actually want to get it done before I start on the MCAL so that I can feel accomplished and have something out of the way. And I'd like to um, finish that second sock as well. And then, and then, um, this coming weekend is the New York City Yarn Crawl. And I'm hoping to take part in that and visit some shops because I've never done that before. Every, it seems like every year, I, well, maybe because it's September, um, I have school and I'm just not paying attention to those things. There's too much going on, but I am aware this year and I do have a busy weekend next weekend, but I'm gonna try to make some time for that. Then in October, of course, is Rhinebeck. And um, I don't think I'm gonna make a sweater specifically for it now because I'm gonna be doing the MCAL and um, I've got several other sweaters that I can wear that I haven't shown off at Rhinebeck yet. And maybe I'll finish that lacy top. And maybe if the weather is warm enough, because you know, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's just not that cold in October. Um, maybe I'll wear that there. We'll see. We'll see. But I am looking forward to it. I'm only going to be there on Saturday. So if you are planning on going to Rhinebeck this year, do please let me know, because um, I would love to meet anybody who's been watching these episodes. Um, and uh, yeah, to touch base, see, see you and say hello. Um, I'm also thinking I'm probably going to go to Wollenfolk. It's a, it's, it's the Friday 
Um, same Friday as Ryan Beck, although I'm not going to go up to Ryan Beck on the Friday. Um, but uh, I am... Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm torn. I, I will probably be there. I'm like 90% there. I just am going to have to take a day off work and make some arrangements. But um, yeah, I think it, it, it'd be worthwhile. Uh, there, I know there are a lot of people that are going to be there that I'm excited to see. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Amy Palco, and she's planning to be there. And from watching her podcast and, and um, also some of Arena's interviews with a lot of Scottish people, I, I realized, oh, a whole lot of the... the People in the Scottish yarn scene are going to be at both Wool and Folk and Rhinebeck, so I'm looking forward to seeing them um, saying hello and, and getting to meet some people that I admire. So, yeah, uh, it's going to be fun. So there is lots to look forward to in my knitting life now. Um, like I said, don't stay sad, get glad. Um, but also, there's not just knitting. Uh, I should also tell you all that uh, my choir... Master Voices, I, t I always tend to like give information about our shows too late. So let me give it to you now. Uh, I'll put a link in the, the, uh, in the notes. But the, um, our season, our first show is going to be great. It's going to be uh, at the Jazz at Lincoln Center. It is a production of Sondheim's The Frogs. And The Frogs is actually based on Aristophanes' play, The Frogs. So it's a classical play that's been updated in the... 70s, I think, is when he wrote it. A lot of people think it's an early work of his. It's not. Um, it's it's kind of well. I mean, it's early-ish, but it's not like one of his first. It's it's after he had a few successes, actually. So um, anyway, that's going to be a, a fantastic show, a lot of fun. Um, they'll be. They haven't announced the cast yet, and so things aren't set in stone. And I can't tell you who it's going to be, but I do know that we always have really top rate um performers and soloists for a show like this so i'm sure it's going to be great then in the spring in i think it's march and april march we're going to be doing a piece um that blends uh several several works by handel in a new and interesting funky way maybe funky is not the right word several of the pieces are going to be presented classically and and traditionally, but then we're doing a big piece that will be um, with a DJ who's going to like be laying beats on top of what we're singing. So if you're a fan of like epic video game type classical music, <laughs> it sounds like this might be that. I don't even really know. It's just going to be new and different and cool. And then in April, we'll be doing a new opera uh, that is, what's it? I say new opera, it's new to, newish. It's in from the last, it's from this century. Let's put it that way. Um, but it's not brand new, but it's, uh, The Grapes of Wrath by Ricky Ian Gordon. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to a couple of things that I'm going to see this week. I'm going to a concert tomorrow that I'm taking, or show actually, I'm taking students to that's a, at the Park Avenue Armory and it's a reworking, resetting, resetting of a bunch of songs by Schubert, a lot of his swan songs, which have been reorganized and staged to comment on war and specifically World War One, um, That should be very cool. Friday, I'm gonna see and hear Verdi's Requiem at the Met. Then um, the following week, I'm going to go back to the Met and see Verdi's opera Nabucco. And then at the end of the month or middle of October, um, I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna see Lorena McKennett. Um, she's somebody that I listened to a lot when I was in high school and college. And um, she had a long hiatus in her career and has, in more recent years, come back to the scene. But um, I've never seen her live. And I'm, I don't know, just kind of tickled by the prospect. <laughs> I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. And uh, fun to get in touch with the sounds of, you know, a different era of my life when I was really, really heavily into her music and other music that was sort of of the, that Celtic, atmospheric, Enya like <laughs> genre. I think she she sits comfortably on the shelf with Enya. And um, anyway, I think it's going to be fun to see them. So I'm looking forward to a whole lot of things in the months ahead. And um, you know what? Maybe I'm not going to call this episode disappointment at all because I really didn't talk about being disappointed a lot, did I? Really, it's more about being hopeful and uh, being 
content and glad and, and grateful that there's so much in life to look forward to and to work on and to make and yeah, why is there any room for disappointment? <laughs> okay, I'm sure there is definitely room for disappointment for other reasons, but not because your yarn is misbehaving. Don't let that ruin anything. All right, I think that's it for this, this uh, episode, everybody. Thank you again for joining and hopefully it won't be two months before the next one. Hopefully. Be well. Take care.